So the question is, am I delayed or am I hidden by God? And what is the difference between being hidden and being delayed? I'm sure this will open your eyes and what it will do is it will teach you how to see and how to know where you are. Because here's the big problem. The lack of assessment will leave you to a drowning place. When you are not able to assess situations from divine perspectives, you are left with human understanding and you may judge incorrectly in the name of trying to find the way. So it takes the absolute grace of God, and I'm saying this uh, with everything that is in me, it takes the absolute grace of God to truly navigate properly to understand if you're hidden or you're delayed. But at the end of it, you will understand if you're delayed, if you're hidden, or if you are resisted by God. You will absolutely be able to tell. Now, if you're ready online, just type number one, then I'll know that you're ready. I know that I'll know you're ready. I'll know that you're ready because this is going to help you it's going to open your eyes and it's going to help you see the way God sees. Amen. Now, it is not just as simple as hidden or delayed. Because there are things that can delay you that are not merely visible. You can be delayed because of your disobedience. You can be delayed because an evil spirit is contending against you. There is one I didn't put in the title because I wanted it to be plain so that many can uh, feel it's relating to them. There's one more that is even more dangerous than you being disobedient or you uh, um, being delayed because of evil spirits. There is also God resisting you. Yeah, absolutely. God can also resist you. And then there is also God hiding you. So there's God hiding you, God resisting you, evil spirits delaying you, or you being the cause of your own delay. The reality is prayer doesn't fix any of these things. Assessment of your life will make you make different decisions that will determine if what you're in will stop or will continue. Can somebody hear me? Yes. Let's read scripture quickly. It feels like water is dripping somewhere. Where is that? Oh, oh, I was like, oh, wow. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 3. Habakkuk chapter 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, mm-hmm. but at the end of it shall speak mm-hmm. and not lie. Mm-hmm. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. One more time. Habakkuk 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Number one, stop right there. Many of you feel delayed, but in reality God is hiding you. Mm. But because you don't know the time of God... You have based everything about you based on the time of men. So when God has a plan for you, God also reveals to you the appointed time that he has set for you. If you are not able to pick up the spiritual time that God has ordained for you to be glorified, you will think you are delayed because 
the events that are preceding you seem to contradict what God is saying. But God is telling you the vision is for an appointed time. Now understand this. When David was anointed by Samuel, David was not anointed to be great. David was not anointed to be a warrior. David was anointed to be king. When the prophet came to him, he was still a young boy. According to uh, uh, theology, many believe he was still a teenager. He was still a young man. It took 30-something years for him to be king. So when Samuel came and poured oil on him and said, you are the king. The Lord is with you. You have to understand that he had no proximity to the throne, number one. Number two, he had to face lions and bears. Number three, he still had to fight Goliath. Number four, he had to serve after, under King Saul. Number five, he had to run from King Saul and then eventually become enthroned. Now, if David did not understand where he was, he would have complained to God, you are delaying me. I can already kill giants. I can already kill lions and bears. People are chanting my name that I am great. Why are you stopping me from the throne? But David understood that it takes a lot more to be king than just winning a war. Many of you, you don't understand that God has anointed you. He has hidden you. But the hiding is becoming a delay. Because you are not doing the necessary work it takes to take possession of what God has ordained for you. Wow. When the appointed time comes, somebody else may take what is yours, not because it was not meant for you, but because you did not develop as you need to be in order to take possession of what God has set for you. The hiding time is the time that God reveals to you your own heart. Wow. In the time of hiding, God shows you, are you in it for me or for you? That's so good. He will put you through trials, he will put you through uh, tribulations to sanctify you, to purify you. But at the same time, he will give you enough comfort for you to know you're in the right place. So the place of hiding carries the presence of God. Because the place of hiding is the place of fire. But God himself is a consuming fire. So God will be working on you. During that process, the people you loved will resist you. The people who are supposed to support you will stop supporting you. But the question is, why are they stopping? Why are they not doing it? If you pay attention to your spiritual life, you will realize that you will rely on the support of men more than the support of God. You realize that you rely on the approval of men Instead of the approval of God. You believe God has approved you. But you need a man to say it. To agree with you for you to rely with, on it. You need man's approval. This is why it's always funny for me when people say they had God. But they are still looking for a confirmation. You don't know God. If God says something to me. I do not need anyone to confirm anything to me. Confirm what? No, I don't need anything to be confirmed to me when God speaks because I know his voice. So understand this by the spirit of God. 
God will shake up your environment. And the hiding doesn't mean people won't see you. The hiding just means that God will make people see you of no reputation. When God hides you, he doesn't keep you pampered and beautiful. No. He strips you of everything that the enemy has nothing to attack you on. Uh, some people are not getting it. He will take everything from you because at that time men will not consider you because you have to remember when God promotes you and lifts you, everyone must look at you and say, mm, this can only be God. He will not allow anybody to credit it to anything, not even yourself. Everyone will look at your life and say, listen, the story of your life is God. Even though you have the talent, the skill, everything it takes to stand upright and to do all the right things, the reality is this. The being hidden is a place of shame. It is the place that God will <laughs> show all your mess. So that the day he lifts you, no one will have anything to say about it. Mm -hmm. well, I know you're shocked. Do you realize when Jesus was lifted by his father, many calls said, isn't, isn't this not the son of the carpenter? Notice God did not hide the fact that Jesus' father had the lowest of jobs. He was a nobody. God saw no issue with that. When the Lord Jesus was crucified, he was crucified naked. God was okay with it. What I'm trying to explain to you is very simple. The place of hiding is the place of molding. It's a fiery furnace that God will shape you like a pot, like a plate. And if you don't appear the way he wants, he will break you again and remold you and put you back in the fire until you become tough until you become useful to him. God doesn't hide you dormant. He doesn't put you in a dormant place. He puts you in a place where he will cultivate you, build you up, refine you, and perfect you. You have to realize by the time David becomes king, David is a man after God's heart, indeed. But David still has weaknesses. I don't know if you can hear me. David is a man after God's heart, indeed. But brother David still has weaknesses. He's still weak in certain areas. But he has been shaped so well that his weakness is no longer a hindrance into the divine purpose of God. As long as your weakness can sabotage, destroy the purpose of God, God will not glorify you, keep you hiding. To be perfected is a lifetime journey. Is a lifetime journey. It is a never-ending process, truthfully. 
It is a continuous process. But nevertheless, nevertheless, God will not allow your weakness to turn into wickedness, to disrupt his work. The hidden place is where you fortify your walk with God. That whether I have or I lack, Jesus is still Lord. Whether I am sick or in health, Jesus is still Lord. If my father and mother forsake me, God is still for me. And if God is for me, then God is more than enough. The hidden place is the place that God prunes you. Is a place that God breaks you. When people look at me walking with the power of God, that the hand of God is with me and truly his finger is upon me and devils can obey me, the prophetic is easy, the expansion of the church is great. They have not seen my hidden years where I slept hungry. I slept in an office space. I was bathing my son on a sink because I have no shower. I'm sleeping on a couch with my son because I have no bed. Actually, not even a couch. It's like one of those IKEA kind of futons because I have nothing. Divorced. Everyone thinks I'm the worst person. And until today, nobody really knows what happened within my marriage. It's just the family and me that know. Stayed like that. Those were my hidden years. They were not pleasant years. Growing up as a foster child because your parents are dead. Growing hand to hand. Moving to place to place. Seeing other children being loved by parents, but you as are dead. But you still love God and you're still in the house of God. Those were my hidden years. That my cousins were looked at and looked and, and they were like, yo, these ones are brilliant. Me, I barely finished school. I, my, my diploma for, no, uh, what is it called? I don't know if you call it certificate or whatever. My high school certificate, I got it years later because even though you do the exam, I couldn't get the certificate because I, I never paid my school fees. Got it later. Did a little bit of college, but I, I didn't finish anything. Those were painful, difficult years when everyone else is prospering, everybody else is being lifted. Those were very hard years for me. But nevertheless, nevertheless, those were the years that God used to prepare me for this moment. If I understood what those painful many years were, I would have even applied myself even more. My understanding was not as great as it is now. But nevertheless, I held on to God. And my life has become a benefit to so many more than just my immediate family. Why? I allowed my hidden years to be my years of perfection in the sight of God. The sign that you are being hidden by God is that God is consistently trying to improve you as a person. The only way that hidden turns into delay 
Personal delay is when God is trying to help you change. And you are saying, uh, I'm still a work in progress. You know, God's still working on me in God's time. No, there's no such thing. God will not force you to change. God gives lessons. It's up to you to accept it or not. And if you don't accept it, you don't skip a class. You remain in the same class. You repeat until you pass. Mm, I feel like I'm talking to myself. So a person that is hidden, there is a character that a hidden person has because they understand they are going somewhere. There is a way somebody that is hidden analyzes life, observes life. When I was going through pain, I just knew God is going to use this for something. I don't fully understand what it is, but he's going to use it for something. I just want to be the best for him. But when your pain is, Father, I want this to pass because I I can't take care of my family. I can't do this. I can't do that. Notice, you will change because of what you want, but not because of what he has. And if you cannot change for what he has, then you don't deserve what he's going to give to you. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Joseph was beloved by his father. Greatly beloved by his father. He was his father's baby. And Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers. But the betrayal was the beginning of his promotion. But God also used that to remove any kind of bitterness that will ever be in Joseph. How do we know this? Joseph is an older man. One day he's in Egypt and countries and nations are coming to buy things from Egypt. By then he was already a prince of Egypt. Ask yourself this question. Why didn't he go and visit his father? He was no longer a slave. Even when he was the head of Potiphar's house, he already had privileges. Why did he not go and see his father? He was so bitter that he blocked them out of his mind. He was. But when he saw his brothers... It provoked something in him that he began to remember home. That when his brothers came back with the younger brother Benjamin, is when he cried. The Bible says that he cried so loud that even Pharaoh heard him in his palace. And he said, my brothers, it is me, Joseph, whom you sold. Don't be afraid. How is my father? Is he still alive? My guy, you've been prince of Egypt for some time. Seven years of prosperity into seven years of, of, of famine had just gotten in. Severe famine was already in. That's already about like, let's say, 10 years already had passed. But he had been in Egypt so much longer than that. He never mentioned his father, never his mother. Nobody. Nobody. But one thing that was good was that he 
never thought of them good or bad. He stayed focused on what was ahead of him. But the purpose in which he was taken into Egypt wasn't even for him, was for the same brothers that sold him. You see, when God is hiding you, the same people that are criticizing you, the same people that are insulting you, when God promotes you, he's promoting you for them. Ah, uh, you didn't hear what I said. You know it hit the spot when Gabe is doing this. I, are you hearing this? Joseph said, now I know that God sent me ahead of you. He did not say, you sold me. He was no longer bitter. He said, now I know. It means the whole time he was wondering, how could his brothers do this for him? But that day he said, now I know. Looking at the famine, looking at what has happened, now I know that God sent me ahead of you to preserve you. Your love for Jesus right now may create for you enemies even within your own family. Love them. And understand that where God is taking you is actually not for you. It's for them. Amen. This is what the hiding place shapes you to be. Somebody that will carry burdens for others. All things work out for good. In the hidden place, no matter what happens, it is designed to benefit you. When God is hiding you, and I was talking to Mike, uh, my son, earlier. I was saying that the Lord Jesus said, said it like this. You are tempted by your own evil desires. <coughs> I believe it was the Lord, maybe Paul. But you are tempted by your own evil desires. So if God wants to remove evil out of you, he has to bring a temptation that will call unto what is inside of you that was dormant. Wow. He won't, Holy Ghost won't drive it out and you don't know what came out of you. No. God will use what is inside of you to be tempted by something external so that it can pull it out of you. And when you act out, you realize like, ah... Oh, how am I doing that? I didn't know this was inside of me. That is how God perfects you. God cannot perfect you in a good place where everything is, oh, I just fasted and prayed and it ended. No. So when Satan was tempting Jesus, he was trying to find wickedness in him. Because if wickedness was found inside of him, he would have fallen. Mm, that's really good. We are tempted by our own wicked and selfish desires. So when temptation increases in your life, you are in the hidden place. Come on, Papa. Okay, let me talk to somebody else. You didn't understand what I just told you. Do you realize when you were in the world, temptations were less? The moment you come to God, it's like they are magnified. It's like left, right, and center, somebody is trying to get you. It feels like everyone is provoking you. It feels like other things that you never had a problem with, now they are all of a sudden so appealing to you, calling unto you. God has already begun the purification process. Can somebody hear me? Yes. The hidden place is the place that God teaches you to control your mouth. Come on. 
Some of you don't have full stops with your mouth. You don't have the ability to just keep your mouth shut and observe. You always have to have something to say. In every matter, you have something to contribute. Sometimes you just can't sit quietly. It seems like if you sit quiet, you're going to explode. It is in this place that God teaches you to be quiet. Because in silence, you hear God. And without learning to be silent, you will not hear God. You see, hearing God is not just about, I prayed and Holy Spirit spoke. Many of the people who say Holy Spirit spoke, Holy Spirit never spoke anything. It's their own instinct. Sometimes they are, they are choosing correctly. Sometimes they are choosing wrong. Because the Holy Spirit won't just speak to you about people. In fact, his primary job is to reveal the Lord Jesus to you that you may walk closer with the Lord. God will try to teach you how to control your lips, your mouth. By your words, you shall be condemned And by your words, you shall be justified. It is in this place you learn to be yes, meaning yes, and no, meaning no. It is in this place you realize anything in between that is of the devil. It is in this place you simplify Your communion, because you have communion with people or communication with people because of speech. It is in this place that you learn gossip is poison. It is in this place you learn saying too much may be me arming the devil to destroy me. It is in this place you learn that my words to men crucify me. If I am to have a secret, let me have a secret with God, not with man. It is in this place that I speak only to God. When I am burdened, I speak to God. When things are difficult, I seek God. If I go to people, I'm realizing that what I say to people, they use it against me. This is the place I learn to control my lips. It is in this place also that the prophetic word is sharpened in you. As the scriptures say, a good man brings out good things out of the treasure of their heart. And an evil man brings out evil things also from their hearts. So it is in this place you learn to say words that build. It is in this place that you stop using careless words that destroy that sabotage your future. Many of the people who are in the hidden place have entered into the place of delay because you say things that destroyed situations that were supposed to carry you forward that now you are delayed because God has to raise somebody else to replace that person to take you to where he wanted to take you. So now... The whole process has been shifted because you messed up the landscape that God has set for you. There's a message I taught on Facebook and I was speaking about the curse of favor. The Bible says you shall have favor with God and with man. It means if I have favor with God, it's not enough. Yeah, it's not enough. Favor with God is not enough. That is why God wants you to be favored with men. Now, let me ask you a question. Joseph was favored with God. If Joseph had no favor with Pharaoh, he's not leading Egypt. God was not going to make Pharaoh (laughs) favor Joseph. Joseph's own behavior, Joseph's character, 
Joseph's ability to navigate, his ability to manage, his ability to respect, his ability to build things was what caused him to be favored because you notice he goes into prison. The prison warden favors him. He's in Potiphar's house. Potiphar favors him. So if he meets Pharaoh, he already knows how to be favored by men. You see, many of you, you are in the hidden place, but you destroyed all your relationships with men, thinking God's favor is enough. And if God wants to bless you, he still has to use men to bless you. So if you destroy your favor with men, God can't help you. Uh, I know many don't like that, but it's the truth. I have favor with God, yes. But God is saying, Jesus grew in favor with God and with men. The people who resisted Jesus were religious people who didn't want him. But regular people who had nothing to do with religion or anything, they loved him. Because he knew how to relate with anyone. You are a prostitute, he knew how to relate with you to bring you to salvation. You are a drunkard, he knew how to relate, relate to you to bring you out of where you are. He was a man of the people. That is why even when they crucified him, the Jews, to, the, 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 the Romans to, 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 um, to, to mock the Jews, they wrote king of the Jews, Inri. They wrote it on top of his cross. Because he was a man of the people. The Bible says, he who wins a friend is wise. He who wins a friend is wise. Many of you don't even know how to win friends. You will remain in the hidden place. And if you stay there too long, it turns into delayed. And it will be delayed because of your own disobedience. David was favored with Saul because he knew how to touch his heart. In the hidden place, you learn how to win people's hearts. Not because you will compromise who you are, but you will understand how to touch people's hearts in order for you to get what God has hidden in them for you. I don't know if somebody can hear me. You want God to make you ruler over much. You can't even manage your own brother or your sister. You want God to expand you. You haven't spoken to your sister for 20 years because you had a falling out. Not understanding that the place of greatness you will deal with all manner of character. If you cannot see the end goal, you will not be able to communicate with people. You cut people off because there's no consequence. But when it comes to destiny, every single person, there will be a repercussion for how you manage them. Jesus knew Judas was stealing. He allowed him to continue to steal. Yes. He knew Judas was stealing offerings big time. And Jesus knew and he allowed him because Jesus needed him to love money so that he can sell him. Ah, you didn't get it. My father did this to me. I will never talk to him. You don't have to be best friends. But you can be somebody that has peace. If you still carry resentment, you haven't fixed yourself. If you carry resentment towards anybody, you're not ready for God's promotion. Because when you are lifted, there will be so many people to offend you. 
There will be so many people to provoke you. Be- blessed are the peacemakers for they shall what? Huh? <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> Musa, can you help them? <laughs> blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Listen to this. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. If you want to be in control of the kingdom in your region, be a peacemaker. (laughs) Having peace doesn't mean I agree with you. Having peace is I accept you where you are. The hidden place. Is indeed. A glorious place. It is in this place. That God makes you more like Jesus. For 30 years. For 30 years, nobody knew what was going on with Jesus. All we see him is is as an adult. Being baptized, going into the wilderness, tempted, he overcomes and he's preaching the gospel. For his lost years, he was being refined. He was being perfected. Don't, actually it's, uh, they will be called children of God. They will be called children of God. Musa, I trusted you. (laughs) Push some. Huh? Win some, you lose some. So, so hear this, hear this, hear this. <laughs> I trusted you, man, dang. <laughs> so, so, understand this, understand this. Don't allow your character, stubbornness, to remove you from the hidden place. Don't allow it to remove you from the hidden place. I'll say it one more time. Don't allow it to remove you from what? The The hidden hidden place. place. I could go on with this place, but I know you understand the point of it is that the hidden place is a place of growth. When you are ready, God won't keep you in the hidden place. In the hidden place, you work like all depends on you, but you pray like all depends on God. I'll say it one more time. In the hidden place, you work like all depends on you, but you also pray like all depends on God. Prophet T.B. Joshua used to say that all the time. But that is what the hidden place looks like. Now, what is the place of being resisted by God? Hmm. This one is dangerous and it's very scary. James chapter 4 verse 6. James 4 and 6. James 4 and 6. James 4 and 6. 
but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. God resists the proud, but gives more grace to the humble. Now, what does it mean to be humble? Many times people think to be humble is to be soft-spoken, to just be lowly, pleasant, but to God being humble is to be obedient to the death. Humility carries obedience also. An obedient person is a humble person. Your obedience, if it lacks humility, you see, soldiers, whatever they are told they do, that is what being humble is. They have no questioning within them. Whatever authority says, yes, sir, I will go and do it, and they will go and do it. That is what being humble truly means. Obedience is a part of humility, but it's not the fullness of humility. Pride has kept some people in the hidden place. God can give you everything. You may be ready to go, but the moment he analyzes you and finds self-righteousness. He finds that you believe you are better than everybody. He finds that you believe that you are the reason why things are. God will resist you. He will make everything that he gave you of no effect until he breaks you again and he starts you over. There are people who passed all the classes of being hidden. But because they saw how God turned them to be, pride entered them. And because of pride, they were not even delayed. God now resisted them. God now says, no, I can't let you keep going because you will destroy my work and destroy my workers that are also there. Being resisted is always because of one thing, pride. Pride is what will make God resist you. So if you don't want to be resisted by God, you have to get rid of pride. Meaning you have to become what? Humble. You have to become extremely humble in the presence and the sight of God. It is absolutely important to understand that. It's absolutely important to know that pride will get you resisted by God. If you do not desire to be resisted, humble yourself in the presence of Almighty God. If you can do that, the Lord will elevate you, the Lord will lift you, and you will indeed see the goodness of God more than you have ever known before. And that is the absolute truth. Being delayed. <laughs> I'm going to speak about the demonic one. The demonic delay is always a picture that is painted within your family before even you. Because demons operate with patterns. If you have instability in your life, 99% of the time is your parents also lacked stability. Hello? Hello? 
Is somebody listening to me? It begins generationally. That the destiny that God has set for a family, the family will be talented, the family will be hardworking, the family will have all these amazing, beautiful attributes. But the main issue will always be one thing. Nobody ever seems to go beyond a certain point. Everyone always ends up mediocre. Everyone seems to always feel like when they're about to go beyond a certain point, something pushes them back. When you're hidden, you can tell at that moment that you're hidden. It is not a force that is holding you. It's a matter of time. You know, at the right time, this will be opened. But when you are delayed, it is not a timing thing. You know you are in a spiritual battle because nothing works. Nothing works. Nothing works. When you're hidden, you will have results, but people won't see them. Because you're hidden. David killed lions and bears, nobody knew. But when you're delayed, you try to lay your hands on something, it just falls apart. There is a spiritual, demonic atmosphere around you. He will cause delay. No matter what you try to work, fails. No matter what relationship you give a hundred percent, you are the holy righteous one, it fails. And it will fail without reason. There will not be an explanation why. <laughs> there will not be a reason why it just falls apart. Is somebody hearing me? So you need to know this as a child of God and you need to understand this. You need to comprehend this with every single thing that is inside of you. You need to know this. You need to understand this. Doors that are not even doors that people knock, they close for you. Anyone can get a job in McDonald's. You, you can't even get McDonald's. There's a demon fighting you. Big time. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Is this making sense? Some people even get relief. You, you have zero relief. Every money that comes in, it goes out. You can't hold on to anything. Now, the problem of the spirit of delay also, it can poison your mind. Because ultimately, whatever the devil does, he wants it to affect your mind. Because if it affects your mind, even if he's driven away, there is a way for him to come back because you already operate the way they operate. Laziness is a sign of demonic influence. The Bible says a little slumber, a little what? Uh -huh. Poverty will at over 
take you like a plague. Poverty will overtake you. It will take you like a thief. So there are many of you that are watching right now and some of you are in here. There's just no drive to do anything. Okay, yes, I have big plans, but what can I do right now to work to sustain myself when I'm waiting for that thing? You see, the thing is, if you cannot do that, it means you don't have the character to manage the big thing that is coming. If you can't wake up to go and make sure you have some money in your pocket for you to eat, to survive, and to do this while you are working on your dream. You are not ready for the big that God is about to release because you cannot manage the little that you must. This is a, this is a need you have to cater to yourself. You can't do that because you're waiting for big dreams. You're not ready for it. A little slumber, a little folding of the hands. Ah, poverty will catch you. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Somebody asked, was Moses delayed or hidden? Moses was hidden. He wasn't delayed. Because when it came time for him to be shaped, he took it. And he had to be a prince of Egypt so that he knows who is delivering. Mm -hmm. Is somebody getting this? So you need to make sure that you analyze your life and see are the things happening to me abnormal or are they normal? You have to be able to assess it. If you cannot analyze and assess that, you are in big trouble. You are in what? Big trouble. You are in very, very, very big trouble. 